Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now there was a time when an Intel Pentium processor was all you needed to enjoy the latest games. I remember seeing videos of an overclocked G3258 not only performing quite closely to an i3 but also an i7-4790K back in the day. Now this was when games didn't really utilise as many cores as they do today, at least not as well. Today then, I thought we'd form a modern take on a Pentium versus i3 budget its CPU battle using the G6400 and 10100 as our competitors. Now as I said years ago, an i3 and Pentium would have come pretty close, both had two cores, and although i3 CPUs had hyper threading, this wasn't always utilised that well. These days things have changed, Pentium CPUs, at least 10th generation ones, have two cores, but they do have hyper threading, so four threads, and of course i3s now have four cores and eight threads since the 10th generation offerings. The Pentium also costs half the price of the i3, but does that mean we only get half the performance? Well, I've paired both with a GTX 1660 Super, and now it's time to find out. Kicking things off with Cinebench R20, and the i3's advantage here is clear. These results in the real world reflect a video rendering performance. CPU intensive tasks will generally complete much quicker with the i3, but that doesn't mean that the Pentium is bad. Let's get into some gaming. Now, for this part, I've thrown up some side-by-side -side gameplay when using both the Pentium and the i3 in combination with the GTX 1660 Super. As I said before, there was a time when a Pentium and i3 would have come quite close, but with the addition of hyper-threading to i3 since this current generation, the gap between performance has increased. This despite the Pentium here getting hyper-threading too. First up then, it's Call of Duty Cold War. On the left of the screen is the Pentium gameplay and on the right is the i3. Both chips are also paired with 16GB of 2666MHz DDR4 in dual channel atop the same H410M HVS budget motherboard. The only hardware that changes with this setup is the processor. So Black Ops Cold War will average at least 60 FPS with both CPUs, but the i3 will offer double the performance in some cases. The G6400 is also the bottleneck or limiting factor here, whereas the 1660 Super is the limiting factor in pairing with the i3, so you might even see a higher frame rate with this and a better graphics card. Now there was one time when Cyberpunk 2077 didn't run on dual core Pentium chips, at least not without crashing or refusing to allow save games to be loaded. Fortunately, this has changed with patches, but the G6400 still causes problems in terms of stutter, and because of this it can be quite hard to enjoy the game in busier areas of the map. It's not terrible, and a plus 30 FPS average will still be doable, but the 1.1% lows reflect some serious frame drops, something that doesn't occur, at least not as often, with the i3-10100. So far then, paying double for the i3 does get you almost double the performance, but let's move on to Fortnite. Here both averages are very good and the real noticeable difference once again is with the 1.1% lows which reflect some serious stutters on the Pentium. While I did notice a few frame drops here and there it wasn't a bad experience by any means and most of the frame drops took place as we took the initial jump out of the battle bus. Of course any dips that do occur during combat will be a bit of a hindrance though and as the frame rate drops in busy built up towns you may find yourself getting wiped out by an enemy with an i3 in their system and end up wishing that you spent the extra yourself. That said, if your budget only allows for the Pentium G6400 then don't worry because it's still an okay chip, especially for the price. As an older game, GTA 5 is more than happy with two cores and four threads and as such will demonstrate pretty solid percentile figures even with the G6400. The numbers will be a bit higher once again with the i3 thanks to the extra cores and GTA 5 is quite a CPU intensive title. I remember when this came out and I had a G3258 in my system clocked at about 4.5 gigahertz I think. The game ran horribly at first and then after a few patches, it started to become quite smooth. Still, I'm thankful for the hyper-threading addition, but it would be nice if Intel switched to four physical cores for this budget lineup and maybe added hyper-threading to the Celerons. 
Interestingly, Red Dead Redemption 2 showed less than 10 FPS difference on average between the two processors, likely because this is a far more GPU intensive game. If I were using, say, an RTX 2080 however, then the frame rate gap would be increased, but there's probably no point in pairing something like that with either of these chips unless you plan to upgrade to an i5 or i7, and pairing something like that with the Pentium makes even less sense. The real differences here though are with the percentile figures which still indicate less drops with the i3, though there were no significant issues with either processor. RDR2 runs really nicely on both and here the Pentium I think holds up quite well. Give Red Dead 4 threads and it will be happy. Now of course there will be a couple more dips with the Pentium below 60, but as I said it's nothing major and overall it's a legit enjoyable experience. Obsidian's The Outer Worlds ran very nicely with the i3 and a little less nicely with the Pentium though, 60 FPS will be achievable by both. There will be far less stutter with the i3 which has sort of become the story throughout but overall anyone on a super tight budget who is wondering if the Pentium can game, well yes it can though it would probably be better suited to a weaker graphics card like a 1650 Super, 1050 Ti or 5500 XT because in all honesty it will likely hold back anything more powerful as seen here. Those with a bit more to spend would be wise to get the i3 as it gives you peace of mind in a way. You're guaranteed to get a smooth experience in most modern games and you can make use of a better GPU. Either one provides access to a decent upgrade path though like an i5, i7 or i9 but I am glad that gamers with very little to spend actually have better options in terms of the Pentiums these days because if they still had no hyper threading then they'd be quite unusable in a lot of situations. But there we go, spending double will in some cases get you double the performance at the lower end of the CPU hierarchy, but those who can only afford a Pentium will still be able to launch and play their favourite games, albeit with some issues in those more CPU intensive scenarios. I hope this helps any of you looking to build a PC right now on a slightly tighter budget. With all that said then, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you use either of these two CPUs in the comments and of course what you think of them. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Just as a quick side note here, I was using the i3-10100 but this will pretty much perform identically to the, the 10100F which can be found for a little bit cheaper, say 20 or 30 pounds or your equivalent um, more than the Pentium so yeah the gap there is even smaller in terms of price so let's say the Pentium is £50 the i3 10100F can be found for 70 or 80 there's even less of an outlay in terms of price and in that case it would be worth getting the 10100F over both the Pentium and the standard 10100. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.